All right. Uh, from uh, muscles to birds, uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, Bridget Butler, and she is the owner of Bird Diva Consulting and also works as the uh, program director for Cold Hollow to uh, Canada, northern Vermont. It's her passion is protecting birds and their habitats through outreach, conservation, and citizen science. And the name of her presentation is So What? How to Grab and Hold People's Attentions About Science. Bridget? Awesome. Hey, Mark, good job. This is a little intimidating, the whole five minute thing. So I'm going to start my timer now, man. Here we go. <laughs> So thank you all for being here today. My name is Bridget Butler. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've learned in my work with radio, television, and public speaking around birds and bird conservation. So on the first slide, and it wasn't up there for long, there were a whole bunch of icons. There were 16 icons, in fact. If you close your eyes for a minute, can you see any of those? Okay, raise your hand if you had more than five that you can recall. All right, look around the room. All right, so here's my, my rule of four. Um, the magic number four um, is really key um, in memory retrieval um, and in mem remembering something as well. And so when I think about presenting information, I try to break it down into different chunks, so four things at a time. It keeps it simple for people so that they can walk out with four things that they can remember and retrieve later on. Um, just recently, I was called by a reporter who wanted to know about turkey vultures and why there were turkey vultures still hanging out in Colchester. So I did a little research and I came up with four things that I wanted to make sure I communicated uh, to him about with turkey vultures. Is where they like to hang out year round, when they typically leave, what type of migrant they were, and why it was possible that these turkey vultures were still hanging out here in Vermont. Those were four easy things. I repeated them over and over again so that he could keep them um, in mind as he went to write his article. So my second thing that I always like to think about, and Chad talked about this a little bit, was your audience. So knowing how they talk and knowing how to listen. There's this great pa paper um, that the title starts out, Hansel and Gretel Walk in the Forest, and landowners walk in the woods. And so really learning how people use different words to describe what they value can be key. So one of the things I've learned is to get rid of a lot of jargon. When I worked for Channel 5, I had to write my own um, scripts for any of the news reports that I did. And wouldn't you know it, each time I walked into the news editor, he would, with a big red marker, say no to fragmentation. <coughs> No to total maximum daily load. No to sustainability. You've got to describe all those things and kind of break it down. All right, my slide advance for me. The next piece is thinking about how can we adapt our data to the ravenous pace in which people devour online messaging. So welcome to the eight second attention span. And actually when you think about that, um, goldfish actually have a longer attention span than we do, oddly. So how do we take something like this, this is my data that I've pulled together through our work with Cold Holiday Canada for the roadkill project called Wild Pass. And it's pretty, right? But the place that I really want to get to is this. So something that's compact, it's bold, it's visual, it gives you the numbers, but it's in a digestible way that someone will be able to grab in eight seconds before, you know, that goldfish moves on to whatever next is next. All right. This is the piece where it's that what's in it for me thing, or what do I do next? I was just sitting in the audience with my colleague Nancy Patch, um, and as the keynote was talking, she was like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? So oftentimes people are having this internal dialogue in their head that we need to make sure we answer in time for them. Also, we want to go back to our four points, so those four big points that we've kind of pulled together and chunked out. And we want to be able to say what's in it for my audience each time I present one of those points to them. Always give them a mode for action. All right. And lastly, the feedback that I get the most when I talk is, 
you're so energetic, you're so inspiring, right? And that's awesome, and I want all of you to have that same passion. I think about the little video clip that you showed, and the scientist, the guy who opened the back of the car, you could see his energy, you could feel his energy. So I want to give that to you. So think about how you talk to your colleagues when you're really excited about your findings, and then use those things where you're gonna throw out the jargon, figure out your audience, and talk about it in a way that's gonna be great for them. All right, I have 30 seconds. Everybody stand up, because this is gonna help energize you. This is the power pose that Amy Cuddy, you may have seen this TED Talk. If you get nervous when you go in front of different people and you're talking, this is a great thing to do. It will bring you energy, it pushes the stress hormones down, and brings your excitement hormones up. So, everybody strike your best Wonder Woman pose. <laughs>